Hi everyone. Thank you for joining us for July 2022's Stampin' Class by Mail. I'm Gina Wieselman of MySweetPaper.com and I can't wait for you to stamp and assemble your cards using the Splendid Day Suite by Stampin' Up. I've teamed up with Brenda Cardinal, another Stampin' Up demonstrator, to offer these monthly classes by mail. This month, Brenda will show you how to stamp and assemble your cards, and next month it'll be my turn. Make sure to watch to the end of this video for a sneak peek of my card designs for next month. And while you're here, go ahead and click subscribe on this YouTube channel so that you don't miss any of our monthly videos. Have fun making your cards, and here's Brenda. Thanks, Gina. Hi, everyone. I'm Brenda Cardinal of stampintulip.stampinup.net, and I'm excited to show you how to stamp and assemble your cards using the Splendid Day Suite by Stampin' Up. This suite can be found in Stampin' Up's new July to December 2022 mini catalog. If you order a class kit by mail from either Gina or me, you'll already have your cardstock and embellishments cut and ready to go. All you need to do is add the stamp set, ink pads, and a few other supplies shown here. Please reach out to Gina or me if you need any supplies, would like to chat about becoming a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, or host a Stamping Up! event. Let's get started with our first card design. Our first card is our Sending Soft Hugs card. If you ordered a Stampin' Class by Mail kit from either Gina or me, all your parts and pieces, including those that have been die cut, embossed, or punched, were shipped directly to your home. If not, here are the things you'll need to complete your cards as designed. Pause the video here to prep everything and then come back when you're ready. Let's start by doing our stamping and we'll be using our soft seafoam ink. And we'll start by stamping our greeting. And we want to just try to center that up. And then we'll set that aside. Next we'll stamp on our soft seafoam pieces and I'm going to bring in a piece of scratch paper to put down on my work surface and we're just going to add some images along the bottom. We're not going to stamp the whole thing unless you'd like to. You're welcome to stamp the whole thing if you want. Okay, and then if you would like, you could stamp that same image on the inside of your card. And then we could also stamp that same image on our envelope. Okay, and that's all of our stamping. To assemble our card, we'll go ahead and take our basic white card base. This is the thick basic white. The thick basic white cardstock is more like a commercial card that you'd buy at a store. Okay, so then we're going to add our um, strips here. We're going to start by adding the, the two outside pieces first, the ones that we stamped uh, with a soft sea foam. And what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we have the same borders on the top, bottom, and left side. I'm not going to put a lot of pressure in there in case I want to adjust. And then we'll add the soft sea foam piece that we stamped to the right side of our car. card. Again, same borders as the first piece we laid down. Oops. And then we'll add our designer series paper. And then I will just tuck this one between those two. And what I'd like to have happen here is that we have the same straight line across the top. So all three design or th all three pieces are mounted at the same height. And I think I need to make a little adjustment here. Let's see. I think what I want to do is I want to bring this one down just a little bit. This one needs to be straightened out a little bit. A 
Okay, I think that looks pretty good, so I'll put some pressure on that. And then I will bring in my scalloped punched oval and I'll add our uh, reading to that. And I should mention those two ovals came from the double oval punch. Then we'll bring our Stampin' Dimensionals and we'll use, I think we'll use two. And we'll place that right there. And our last step is to add our bow. This ribbon is just so soft and beautiful. Um, and I'll use my glue dots to do that. One of the class bonuses when you order a class kit by mail from either Gina or me is that we pre-tie these little bows for you so you don't have to. Okay, and then if we bring our envelope back in, there's our first card. Our next card is our much loved card. And here are the parts and pieces you'll need for this card. We'll again start by doing our stamping and for this card we'll use our petal pink ink. And we'll start by stamping our greeting on this die cut label that was cut with the All That Dies. There we go, we'll set that aside. And next we're gonna add um, just like a little texture on this piece, the topmost piece of the petal pink um, layer. And we're gonna use this kind of this fill in snap. And so let me show you how I did that. What we're going to do is we're going to ink up our stamp, but rather than going right to the paper, I want this to be very subtle. I'm going to stamp it off once and then twice and then stamp it on my cardstock. It, the camera might not pick up on this very well, but it's just, just a soft little um, image in the background. I tried it by going full strength um, with my stamp, um, so right from the stamp pad to the, the cardstock, and it took away from our focal point here. So then I tried it with stamping off just one time, and it was still a little too distracting. So I decided I liked it when I stamped it off twice, just again for that soft, soft look. This whole suite is just uh, kind of soft and and pretty, so I wanted to make sure that my stamping was soft and pretty too. Okay, I'll bring this up. Maybe you can see it a little bit better if I do this. I'm not sure, but you'll see obviously when you stamp it. Now if you'd like, you could stamp that same image along the inside basic white panel if you'd like. So let me show you how I did that. So I inked up my stamp again, and then I stamped it off once, and then I went to my card, my basic white cardstock here. I just kind of moved the stamp around to kind of give a little bit of a random look to that. Okay. Just a little something on the inside. And then if you want, you can also stamp your envelope. And I'll show you what full strength looks like. It's really pretty, but again, like I said, it just felt like it was a little too bold for the front of our card. There we go. All right. And that's all of our stamping. And now let's cut this banner. We don't have a die or punch to make that notch for us to create the banner, so we're gonna do it with our paper snips. The first thing you wanna do is make sure your designer series paper is oriented the right way. And then I'm gonna use my grid paper here and a pencil. And at the top of the grid paper, you have, I don't know what you call it, but it's like a zero ruler, right? So it has a zero here, and then you lay your designer series paper so that you have the same distance from zero to the right and zero to the left and then you make a little tick mark, okay? Then, with your paper snips, you'll make a vertical cut about three-fourths to a, an inch up, and then you'll cut from the corner here 
to that vertical, vertical cut you just made. And then you'll do that from the other side as well. Okay, and that's how we create our banner. All right, so let's start assembling our card then. So we'll take our petal pink card base, and again, to use our bone folder to make a nice crease there. And then with our stamp and seal, we'll add our inside panel. And we'll place that so it's centered And then we'll add our stamped petal pink panel to the front of our card. And again, we'll center that up as well. And then we'll add the banner that we created out of our designer series paper. I'm going to be really generous with my adhesive across the top because I don't want it to stick up because it's going to be mounted on this top layer and we're actually going to mount it all the way to the fold line. So I want to make sure that it's not popping up in that little space between the petal pink panel and the petal pink card base. So I'm going to put some nice pressure on that. Okay. And then we're going to create our point there. So we have several pieces for that. We have two die cut pieces out of vellum and we have two um, cut out of petal pink and then another one cut out of petal pink. What was interesting when I was cutting my shapes um, that some of them the insides kind of hung in there and, and, and stayed in um, place and I decided I kind of liked that look um, but if you don't like it, you can punch those little chads out. And probably the best tool is your take your pick tool. But I kind of like the contrast, more solid die cut versus the open airy one. And the last thing we'll add in is our um, open leaf trinket. Let's bring our punched label back in. And I'm going to start by adding dimensionals to the back. And let's see. The trinket is going to be tucked in here, so I want to just visually um, be strategic about where I place my larger dimensionals. So I think I'll start out with three like that, okay? And then I'm going to pull all the release papers, and I'm going to start building this section to attach to my greeting. So I'm going to layer them up. Now, to make sure it doesn't hang over the edge of your card, because then it won't go in the envelope well, um, I'm going to lay these two together, the vellum and the petal pink die cut, so that the tallest most point of the die cuts are about even. And then I'm going to bring the other one back and put it like that. Okay? And then I'm going to attach it to my label. Okay, I like how that looks. I'm just going to test it and see. You know, I think it needs to be tilted down a little bit and tucked in a little bit more because it looks like if I center the label, it's going to hang over. So let's adjust that for what we can right now. Okay, so add a more this way. And tucked in. Let's see how that looks. Oh yeah, that'll be better. Okay, so then we're gonna do just these two pieces. And because I put this open petal pink die cut on this side of of the vellum, I'm gonna put this one to the right of it, and then I'm gonna tuck that in as well. So again, before I put too much pressure, I'm going to take a look at it. And it looks like it needs to be tucked in just a little bit more. Yeah, 
There we go. And then I'm going to come back with my mini Stampin' Dimensionals. And now I'm going to fill in some spaces with mini Stampin' Dimensionals. Because I've covered up most of my dimensionals with the die cut. And you know what? Just for safety's sake, I'm going to come back in with my liquid glue and add a little liquid glue on there as well. So it really sticks to the designer series paper. Okay, so release papers off. And then we'll attach that. I'm going to center it left and right, and then wherever it looks good, um, up or down. Okay, now to attach our little trinket, here's what I found works great. We'll take a mini glue dot, and we'll put a mini glue dot on the back side of the little eyelet here that you might use to um, pull a ribbon through to tie it onto your card. And then I'm going to add a little multi-purpose liquid glue to the top. So the glue is going to stick to the label. The um, mini glue dot will stick to the um, designer series paper. So then I'm going to tuck it in here. I'm going to kind of place it where I think I like it. It seems a little high, so I'm going to adjust it a little bit. It's a little tricky, but yeah, I think I like the way that looks. Okay. There we go. And then if we bring our envelope back in, here's our second card design. And our last card is our Tropical Bouquet Fun Fold card. And here are the parts and pieces for this card. Let me show you how this card works. So the Fun Fold opens this way and then this way. And I have to give a big shout out to Terry Gaines who shared this Fun Fold idea with me in a swap card. All right, let's start with doing our stamping. And for this card, we'll use our Pool Party ink. And we'll start by stamping the inside panel. I don't want the whole thing because I need to leave a little bit of room to do the writing. So we'll do that much of the leaf image. And then if you'd like, you can also stamp your envelope. And then lastly, we need to stamp um, our die cut that we that we have here. Now, with a cling stamp, it's a little harder to to see where you're going here. So the best method for getting the perfect placement is to use our stamp apparatus. So let me pull that in. I'm going to clean my stamp and bring in my stamp apparatus. So our setup for our stamp apparatus this time around, because this is a cling stamp and it does have the foam already uh, mounted to the rubber. We don't need that extra foam here on our stamp apparatus. So I just have the base, the panel, and a piece of the grid paper. So what we'll do is we'll take the stamp off the block and then we'll place it on our grid paper and then we'll pick it up with that panel, okay? And then we'll go ahead and ink it up and to make inking a little easier, I'm gonna put my stamp case underneath the panel with a stamp that's mounted on it. And then we're going to stamp down that image. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take our relief image from where we die cut our shape and we're going to put this around our stamped image. And so then when we drop our, oh, looks like I need to adjust it just a little bit there. When we drop our die cut back in, And we ink up our stamp and stamp it down. Oops. We'll end up with perfect placement. 
love the Stamparatus. Especially if I want something stamped in a specific spot and also um, if I'm going to do multiples of something, it's really easy to do it that way. So keep hang on to your relief when you die cut things because sometimes the Stamparatus is the better way to stamp images. Let's start assembling our card now. So we'll start out with our basic white card base. This has been embossed with a time-worn type 3D embossing folder. And when you emboss this, what you want to do is you want to actually fold these panels in. You want to send it through the stamp and cut and emboss machine as it will appear when your card is folded. So actually the embossed image is on the entire card base. All right. So now that we have that, we are going to bring in our stamped basic white piece. And with our stamp and seal, we are going to add it to our pool party layer, centering it up so we have equal borders all the way around. And then we're going to add this to the inside of our card. And we're going to center that as well. Okay, next we're going to add another pool party layer, and this is the one that appears to go down the center of our card. So um, what we want to do is we want to apply our stamp and seal along the left edge of the pool party piece, and then we want to apply some more stamp and seal along the cut edge of the left flap. Then we want to lay this piece in making sure that um, it aligns um, with the card base at the top and bottom and that it's centered left and right inside this section here. Okay, and once we like how that looks, I need to straighten mine up a little bit. That looks good. Then we'll close the flap and it'll pick up that pool party piece. Okay. Then we'll bring in our pretty designer series paper and we'll put some stamp and seal on that. And this one's a little directional, so you want to be sure you're watching for that. And then we'll close both flaps. And then we'll center this designer series paper between those two flaps. And there you go. So there's the basis for our fun fold. Okay, so let's uh, work out our little diamond element there. We'll add our basic white die cut square to our pool party die cut square. And these um, have been cut with our new stylish shapes dies. One of my new favorites. Okay, so we have that. And then we want to create that... Um, pretty element that was die cut. This die cut po um, popped out with a lot of the um, chads still in it and I kind of like that look as well. So what we want to do is we're going to add a little liquid glue here just a little bit and then I'm going to add liquid glue to this piece too and I'm going to put it on those chads. Now, if you don't have chads, if they've fallen out, no worries. Just put a little glue um, wherever you can. And then we're gonna layer this up. So the stamped die cut piece will go on the larger pool party die cut piece. And then the smaller die cut piece will go on top of all of that. And I'm kind of lighting up the stems a little bit. That's how I, um, Put it together. So then we'll flip it over and using our mini Stampin' Dimensionals we'll add a whole bunch of those kind of wherever they'll fit. And I'm also using the dimensionals to kind of bridge over um, some of the uh, pool party die cut so it uh, keeps it together as well. I think that looks like enough. And you know what? I'm going to change my mind about how I'm putting this together. I'll pull all these release papers 
but I'm going to set that aside for a minute because I think it's probably going to be better to put this on first. So we are going to um, adhere it only to the right panel. So I'm going to put stamp and seal just on that corner. And I want it centered and I want to make sure that the points that are uh, vertically are lined up and the points that are horizontally are lined up. So it looks like a true diamond and then put some pressure on that corner and there we go. All right, so now we can add our tropical bouquet. And then we'll add our pre-tied bow with a mini glue dot. And lastly, we'll add our fine sparkle gems. These are so pretty. And in your kit, you might've gotten two big, one small, um, one big, two small. And I place them, you know, you could probably place them wherever you wanted to. I started out placing them here, but then I thought it looked a little cluttered. So I thought, well, what if we place them by the um, pool party diamond? What would that look like? And I kind of liked it, actually. And there we go. We bring our envelope back in. There's our third card design. I have a few more samples to show you using the Splendid Day Suite. I'm going to bring back in our second card. As I was designing uh, the cards for this class, I started out by doing a more monochromatic card. So this um, designer series paper is more fresh freesia. And so I just did the whole card in fresh freesia. And while I liked it, I thought we lost a little bit of the pizzazz or wow factor of the designer series paper because it's a foil, right? So it's so pretty. So I thought, what if we put that on the petal pink? And you know, because of the trinket and it's more kind of a coppery color, I thought that was fun. And then I'm gonna bring back in our third card. And when I first looked at this paper, um, it looked, I wasn't sure, is it is it green? Is it blue? Um, there was no real other than soft sea foam um, colors listed on the designer series paper package and I thought no that's not soft sea foam um, I wonder what it would look like if I use soft succulent and um, I liked it because when we put a more green colored cardstock next to the um, designer series paper it looks more green but I thought well let's pull out the pool party and see what we think and so when I did that then the designer series paper looked more blue. And I did like this overall more soft look of this card with the pool party versus the soft succulent, but I think they're both really pretty. The dies in the Splendid Day Suite are awesome, but I thought, what if I didn't have a stamp and cut and emboss machine? What could I do? And so I took um, the backside of one of the pretty designer series paper. It's a uh, Sahara um, sand, and it just has like a uh, kind of a burlapy kind of texture. And I took um, a couple of the images from the stamp set and the Sahara sand ink and created a kind of a fun um, background for my card. This is actually the designer series paper. And then I just cut a rectangle of um, basic white cardstock and stamped my greeting. So when I saw this particular pattern of designer series paper, I immediately thought wedding. And so I had to create a card for a wedding. And a couple elements for this card, I used the all that dies to create my focal point here. And then I got my, out my Simply Scoring um, scoring tool and put some um, score lines. I put four of them on my card. They're a half inch in from um, each side and then an inch in. And I thought that just added a little something extra to the card. Now I hate to cover up um, the pretty foils, but I loved these colors together and they're so soft and pretty. So I wanted to create a card just with the um, kind of the reverse side of the foils couple details about this card. I used the painted texture 3D embossing folder for my 
basic white layer here. And that's a fun embossing folder just to give a little texture to your card. And then um, I die cut my banners using the um, stylish shapes dies, a new favorite, and then some more of that really soft, pretty ribbon. And because I made one card that was just the backside of all those pretty foil designer series papers, I thought, wouldn't it be fun if I pulled out the metallic looking designer series paper and made a card just using those. Um, and this is a slimline card, super fun. I'm ha it's just a different shape, it's, it's fun. Now for um, my shapes, I use the beautiful shape dies to, to cut out all these shapes and some of our metallic mesh ribbon. And lastly, uh, kind of my go-to layout. Um, and I thought this was just soft and pretty. This is our new petal pink ribbon, and it's kind of suede-y. It's, it's really soft and, and so pretty. So I hope my samples inspire you to make even more cards with your Splendid Day Suite. Thanks for participating in this month's Stampin' Class by Mail. And now here's Gina with a few more things for you. Thanks for showing us how to make those beautiful cards, Brenda. Make sure to follow the link in the video description to access the special Pinterest board that Brenda and I have curated to show you even more ways to use your Splendid Day supplies. Next month, it's my turn to design and share the cards with you, and I'm excited to share a sneak peek of our three card designs. We'll be doing some Christmas in August with the Trees for Sale stamp set and coordinating celebration item tree lot dies, which you can actually earn for free with a qualifying Stampin' Up! order. If you order a class by mail kit from either Brenda or me, you'll get all the paper and embellishments cut to size and shipped to your door. You just need to make sure you have the stamp set, ink pads, and other assembly supplies shown here. The registration deadline to guarantee your kit supplies is August 5th, 2022. Check your email for some bonus opportunities as well, including a chance to earn a free class by mail sampler kit with a qualifying Stampin' Up! order. If you're not already on one of our email lists, contact either Brenda or me and we'll get you added. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. Don't forget that the celebration promotion is running through the months of July and August. This means you can earn some free items, host an event and get extra free stuff, or get some bonuses for signing up as a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Brenda or I would be happy to chat further with you, so please reach out to us if you have any questions. We love hearing what you think and getting your feedback, so leave a comment and let us know which card design was your favorite. Until next month, happy stamping.